Good morning, Facebook. It is 8.04 on this August 5th. It is a Friday today. So happy Friday, everybody. Making it through the week, at least we have. I'm sure many of you guys are just starting off your Friday, but um, yeah, of course, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you didn't know, you can always find this later throughout the day on our Inform YouTube channel. Yes, we do have a YouTube channel now. Um, and then you can always just uh, find this on your favorite podcast platform as well, whether it be Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Music. Um, and you can also find it just by going to inform.com slash podcasts, and then you can just click on the Inform Minute. Okay, um, first I wanna point ahead um, and, and recap something quick for you. Um, drivers in Moorhead, specifically who take I-94, I know that it has been a crazy past few weeks, especially if you've uh, been making your way to Minneapolis or Lakes Country or heading that way. Uh, we've seen traffic backed up there a lot and I know that has been very frustrating. Well, good news for you, uh, crews are actually taking down those construction, construction barriers that obviously, you know, narrowed the lane to just one lane. Um, it of course also played uh, a really big role in two deadly crashes just last month. And like I said, it backed up traffic for miles at times. So um, guardrails are being replaced. That project now is expected to move to the east from the 34th Street exit to Highway 336. So I wanted to let you know about that. If you're in that 34th street exit to highway 336 area if you're driving in that area i would expect some delays uh just because that that work is still going to be continued there uh but just thought i'd let you know a little bit of relief on i-94 in moorhead also today that grand forks man who was accused of killing his roommate two months ago um he's going to be making his first appearance in front of a judge judge for that murder charge we're talking about 39 year old kindy jallo uh and documents say that he beat up and then stabbed 67-year-old Douglas Elgert in their Grand Forks apartment, which was all back in May. Uh, Jala was arrested after police say that they caught him trying to throw away some evidence. And if convicted, he does face up to life in prison without parole. So uh, we'll uh, be in the courtroom there and we'll let you know what comes out of that. Okay. Um, exciting news in Grand Forks, more than 600 students at UND is going, they're going to be walking across the stage to get their diplomas. We're talking about 300 undergrad students, um, 240 students going for their master's degrees and 80 doctoral students. Uh, ceremony starts at three this afternoon inside Chester Fritz Auditorium. If you live in Grand Forks, you went to UND, you know where UND is, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so if you are going there for the commencement ceremony, the university is asking you to just park in the south lot of the auditorium. Uh, if you'd like to watch it live from the comfort of your very own home, you can still do that just by going to und.edu or you can just go on UND's Facebook page to catch that live stream as well. Okay, sticking in Grand Forks, we know that a big project in Grand Forks is getting the preliminary go-ahead or green light when it comes to um, this project that could benefit the Correctional Center. I'll get to this in a second, but now the the point is you can actually voice your opinion on this. So uh, the County Commission just preliminarily approved $35 million in bonds. So that is going to go toward adding on to the Correctional Center there and then moving the ju Juvenile Center. Bonding terms set at 20 years. Um, and then in the city's preliminary budget for next year, we know that the commission agreed to go up to seven mills to pay for this entire project. So right now, <clears throat> They need to uh, have a public hearing on the bond. If no one actually brings up any sort of concerns with this, the commission is going to make the final decision. Uh, and that final budget hearing will be on September 20th. Also, um, right now, homeowners in Minnesota, some good news for you, possibly, uh, because you can continue to apply for some home assistance. So the Home Help MN program, which we have talked about so much on First News, uh, it started <clears throat> and and it was obviously to help home homeowners during the pandemic. Well, it had an August application deadline, but that is no longer the case. Uh, Minnesota Ho Housing announced that the program is going to continue taking applications until it runs out of money now. Uh, so people with past due expenses, you're encouraged to apply sooner rather than later because that money could run out very quick here. Uh, as of July 31st, we knew more than 4,300 people had applied for that assistance. If you're interested in applying, all you have to do is just go to their website, homehelpmn.org. Uh, and more out of Minnesota this morning. Um, 
a Minnesota County attorney is trying to appeal a district court judge's ruling that blocks laws restricti restricting abortion in the state. The Thomas More Society, which is a conservative Catholic nonprofit, is filing for that appeal uh, on behalf of a Traverse County attorney. And they're pointing to this decision made by a judge in Ramsey County. Um, and they're saying that that decision that this person made doesn't apply to other jurisdictions. So that case ended Minnesota's abortion restrictions, uh, including a 24 hour wait period. We know Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison, um, who was defending the state's law in this case, says he will not be appealing that ruling. Okay, um, let's uh, bring you back to Mandan, North Dakota. We know that a Bismarck man is seriously hurt um, from crashing into a train and this all happened while this person was on an ATV. It all happened on a gravel road about 10 miles outside of Mandan at around 10.30 yesterday morning. He was a 32-year-old man who tried crossing the railroad tracks but then didn't see the train coming. Uh, we do know from troopers, North Dakota State troopers, that the train was going at about 25 miles per hour when this whole crash happened. Uh, and we also know that the man was not wearing a helmet. Um, also, we have another ATV crash to tell you about because a Pearl man is hurt uh, because he crashed his ATV in a rural part of town. So that'll happen 6.30 Wednesday night. Uh, and the driver is 58-year-old Perry Lillis. He was doing some off-roading uh, when that crash happened. So he flew off of the ATV and then he was taken to the hospital. But actually, he's expected to be okay. So that's some good news there. Alcohol was a factor in this crash is what we're hearing from deputies. And we are working to learn if he's going to be facing any charges for that. Okay, um, we have a lot when it comes to our national news segment today, and I think a lot of them are, are pretty important. So let me tell you about this uh, first one that really grabbed my attention this morning. I think it'll hit very close to home for some of you watching or listening as well. Uh, maybe it's already on your um, social media pages, but we do know that police right now are looking for the people involved um, in a shooting at the Mall of America. And we got to see some Snapchat video of of it yes or of it this morning and it all happened when a fight broke out between two groups of people at the cash register inside the nike store there um and because of that they apparently the shooter walked in and started firing from pistol uh but that forced the mall to close for the entire night and uh the good news here is that no one was hurt obviously that's something that we all are curious about right away when you hear about stuff like this um so we're still trying to figure out if they caught the guy do they have any leads in this case um we'll let you know once we figure out those updates also right now we know bikers are making their way to south dakota because today does kick off the 82nd annual sturgis motorcycle rally uh so just for some context guys last year more than half a million people uh, went to that town for this motorcycle rally and we learned from South Dakota's Highway Patrol that serious crashes happen every year. So again, just for some context, last year four people were killed across 60 crashes during that rally week. Uh, there's also, of course, an increase in DUIs, drug violations, general traffic offenses during the rally. So I wanted to let you know about that. Also right now, a little bit more pressing as the U.S. is now under a public health emergency. Uh, and this all comes with these monkeypox cases that have been on the rise across the country, especially in recent weeks. Uh, if you didn't know, the president did make that declaration yesterday, the uh, health emergency. Um, okay, so the first monkeypox case that was found in the U.S. was in May. And more than 6,600 cases have now been confirmed across the country, which is just crazy how fast that grew, right? Only two states um, are the ones without any cases right now. That includes Montana and Wyoming. Uh, we know some states, the bigger states, we're talking California, New York, Illinois, they already declared monkeypox as a public health emergency uh, for their regions uh, because they wanted to get some more funding and resources to help fight this outbreak before it gets worse. So um, wanted to let you know about our fight um, against monkeypox there. Also, um, we know that senators, U.S. senators, are likely going to have enough votes to pass a $300 billion bill that would address things like climate change, taxes, and inflation. So it kind of all comes after Arizona Senator uh, Kirsten Sinema. Uh, she announced her support last night after 
lots of changes were made to the tax provisions in that bill. So that means all Democratic senators should have the 50 votes they need to pass the bill without a Republican filibuster. Uh, we do know that senators do plan on meeting again tomorrow to discuss this bill a little bit further. So we'll let you know what comes out of that. Um, also kind of some big news out of the, the Department of Homeland Security as it says that it's gonna stop wiping the cell phone data and information of high-level officials, political appointees who leave office without first creating some sort of backup. Um, it's temporary, at least this changes for now. And this comes, of course, as we've told you on First News, the DHS has been under fire recently because it... Um, we, they were looking for some text messages from Secret Service agents and all of them were wiped after some sort of data uh, migration process. And then of course, revelations that, you know, again, phones of top former Trump officials were wiped after they left office. We also know that the DHS is taking another step into this. Um, they're launching a 30 day review of policies and practices when it comes to keeping emails, social media messages and text messages as official federal records. Also um, really big on the headlines this morning for you. Oh, thank you. Um, so first, let's talk about Alex Jones. He is InfoWars radio host who claimed that the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting was a hoax, um, which is not true. It's a conspiracy theory. And uh, today we know that jurors in Texas are set to discuss the possibility of even more damages after um, they ruled that he should be paying $4 million to parents of a boy who was killed in that massacre. Well, we heard a little bit more about this and we figured out that he's trying to get out of paying it because his lawyers are saying, well, he's broke. He's, you know, he doesn't have any money left to pay this. Um, and that could, of course, be really tricky and, and um, a little bit controversial because he has to prove that he actually doesn't have this money, right? So uh, lots going on there, but he has to, again, successfully prove in court that he really has no money left if he if it's true that he filed for bankruptcy. Uh, that's not the end for uh, Alex Jones, though, when it comes to his legal issues, because the January 6th committee has now said that they want text messages that were sent and received by Alex Jones that could, of course, help them possibly in their investigation into the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Judge denied a request by Jones's lawyer to have 10 days to review those messages. So uh, we should get an update on that pretty soon here. Uh, and once we do, we'll let you know about it. Okay, Hot Mike with Dom Izzo, 9211, WDYExtraInform.com. Fargo Little Leaguers debut in Indianapolis at the Midwest Regional. They're going to have a live update, so that'll be really fun. Uh, also, um, NDSU's newest women's basketball commit you can get to meet. Uh, she's returning from a serious back injury, and she's just a junior in high school. So crazy, must be crazy talented. Um, so make sure you go join Dom this morning, 9211, WDYExtraInform.com. All right, everybody, I think that's all we got for today. Um, just remember, you can get that deal right now on inforum.com slash subscribe, uh, where you can get your first three months of unlimited local news, sports, weather, even national news uh, for just 99 cents a month for your first three months. All right, everybody, we have news at 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10, but you already knew that. And then we have our first news Saturday and Sunday shows. Uh, Saturday runs from 7 to 8.30. Sunday runs from 7 to 8 in the morning. So make sure you jo go join Jenna Scott on the Anchor Desk. And then we'll be back here on Monday morning from 5 to 7. Hope to see you then. Bye, guys.